Hi everyone, welcome to Alternavita. A new post for you this week, and it is about a new superfood, a brand new study, and the first of its kind study. Although there have been some that confirm these results uh, using other components of this superfood, and there have been some studies post this study that also seem to confirm these results. So I'm going to um, be reading here from my post for you. And um, one reason this is extremely important is that metabolic syndrome and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are affecting 93% of Americans and um, we can't afford the problems that we have, let alone increasing them by almost 100%. So this is extremely important, and I have been researching this subject now for at least probably a year now, and I have taken the advice to heart from one of the leading pioneers in this subject and um, his exact words to paraphrase are that no drugs are going to affect this. The only thing that reaches the mitochondria is food and the only thing that affects the mitochondria positively is food. So this is what is leading to my superfoods Posts, and I am going to have this as a menu item from now on, and it will be called medicinal foods. So just, I know this from experience, which is why I generally only recommend food-based supplements. And for one example, um, FTSC inhibitors, uh, which are which led to the world's best and safest antibiotics are um, two out of three of the ones that I know are foods, and that would be cinnamon and turmeric. So that's just one example of superfoods that are clinically shown to benefit people and another one is berberine but that's not a food that's a what is it is it an herb yeah so i wouldn't put berberine in the food category but it is one of the effective ftsc inhibitors so and excuse my one of these days i have to get a light i'm either green or red and i've <laughs> not actually either so I'm going to uh, move this up here so that I can read and this is very exciting so I will probably have more than one post on this particular food superfood wheat germ for metabolic syndrome and NAFLD Okay, I'm losing my light. Okay, wheat germ. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in, is increasing globally without definitive pharmacological treatments. This, this study aimed to evaluate the clinical effects of wheat germ in NF, NAFLD patients. 50 participants were randomly assigned to receive 40 grams of wheat germ or placebo in a 12-week double-blind trial. A fiber scan definitely diagnosed them with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. After 12 weeks, the wheat germ group showed significant reductions in serum alanine aminotransferase, glutamine, Glutamyl transferase, total cholesterol, triglycerides, 
hepatic steatosis, that's fatty liver, compared to the placebo group. Serum antioxidant cap capacity levels increased in the wheat germ group and C-reactive protein levels significantly decreased. These findings suggest that wheat germ may improve total antioxidant capacity. Hepatic steatosis, serum cholesterol, triglycerides, and other markers of NAFLD. One of the benefits is it, that it activates neuropeptides, cytokines, and macrophages due to its anti-inflammatory properties. So the proven benefits in this particular study were Let me get to my list here. Decrease in fatty liver, improved liver enzymes, reduction in liver inflammation, reduced oxidative stress, insulin reduction, improved triglycerides and cholesterol levels, and lower fasting blood sugar, but that particular result was dose dependent. So I'm just going to read this. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a major health issue leading to complications like cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, liver transplant, and mortality. NAFLD prevalence ranges from 20 to 30 percent, exceeding 90 percent in obese diabetic patients. Rising obesity and diabetes rates coupled with poor lifestyle choices are projected to make NAFLD the leading cause of liver transplants. NAFLD is linked to subclinical cardiovascular disease markers such as atherosclerosis and increased carotid artery, medial thickness, fat, excessive fat accumulation, and insulin resistance contribute to NAFLD. NAFLD is a strong, strongly associated with lipid accumulation, oxidative stress, inflammation, lipid peroxidation, and apoptosis. Nutrition plays a cr crucial role in NAFLD prevention and management. And wheat germ derived from milled flour is rich in unsaturated fatty acids, protein, carotenoids, phytochemicals, tocipherols, folic acid, thiamine, iron, magnesium, and zinc. It has demonstrated beneficial effects on hypercholesterolemia, mental health, prostate cancer, and hemodialysis patients. These particular researchers in 2021 found that wheat germ consumption significantly reduced stress and depression in type 2 diabetes patients. 14 weeks of wheat germ consumption showed long-term benefits for cholesterol levels in type 2 diabetes and hyperlipidemia management. This is the first study to investigate the impact of wheat germ consumption on patients with NAFLD. This study aims to evaluate potential benefits on lipid profiles, glycemic status, hep hepatic enzymes, and hepatocyte apoptosis. Inflammatory markers, total antioxidant capacity, and liver fibrosis in NAFLD patients. So again, here are the benefits, decreased fatty liver, improved liver enzymes, reduction in liver inflammation, reduced oxidative stress, insulin reduction, that is key, improved triglycerides and cholesterol levels, and lower fasting blood sugar, but this, again, that's dose dependent. Hmm. So, in this study, the reduction of ALT and GGT 
was significantly greater in the wheat germ group, also showed a significant reduction in fatty liver in the wheat germ group. Previous studies have demonstrated that wheat germ oil effect effectively reduces fatty liver and protects against oxidative damage. Wheat germ has shown anti-inflammatory effects and is rich in bioactive components. Our results show that wheat germ's antioxidant cholesterol lowering, anti-inflammatory, anti-apoptotic, and hepatoprotective effects significantly impact NAFLD. Wheat germ oil, again, it's high in vitamin E and all of the cofactors. Wheat germ oil rapidly increases tissue vitamin E content. So um, I just want to say one of the reasons wheat germ is not in flour and bread is because of this these oils and the fact that they can become rancid and therefore lead to a shorter shelf life. So that's why wheat germ is removed from flours and breads. So it protects against oxidative stress, lowers cholesterol, has neuropeptide cytokines and macrophages. Betaine in wheat germ inhibits the inflammatory response and improves insulin resistance. It alleviates liver oxidative stress by targeting, targeting molecular pathways like NFKB, AMPK, PPAR, LXRA, AKT, and TLR4. So you want to make sure that it is hitting the pathways according to the researcher I am basing this information on. And this study did have some limitations in that it did not include liver biopsies, obviously because it was done on humans and um, specific biomarkers for wheat germ consumption were not measured in serum and urine. And even though three months was a good, pretty long-term study, the long-term effects were not known past 12 weeks. So in conclusion, wheat germ consumption for 12 weeks significantly reduces inflammation, cholesterol, triglycerides, improves the antioxidant, antioxidant capacity, fatty liver, and these specific enzymes in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So how does it work? Betaine might be an important part, but they're not quite sure yet. So let me scroll down here. It's a rich source of bioactive components with antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. It's cholesterol lower, lowering, it's anti-inflammatory, it's anti-apoptotic and it's hepatoprotective. And the potential mechanisms include unsaturated fatty acids, high levels of vitamin E, cofactors. It increases tissue vitamin E content, <clears throat> counters oxidative, counters <clears throat> oxidative stress, and toxicity. And that toxicity would be primarily be from fructose, linoleic and alpha linolenic acids, lower cholesterol, and important, it activates macrophages. The betaine in wheat germ inhibits inflammation, improves insulin resistance, and reduces liver oxidative stress, and specifically targets the pathways I just mentioned. 
and there's much more to come on wheat germ. So this particular study, how to use four to five tablespoons of wheat germ per session. You can add it to oatmeal, other healthy breakfast cereals, porridge, smoothies, yogurt, breads, and muffins. It had a high safety profile. It was well tolerated. Gluten sensitive or other allergen sensitive people should avoid wheat germ, but refined wheat germ oil typically contains no gluten. According to some studies, wheat germ oil may have include similar benefits. And according to the FDA, wheat germ oil is gluten-free if it contains no more than 20 parts per million of gluten. This is because the refining process typically removes all gluten proteins from wheat germ oil. However, it's possible that refined oils may contain trace amounts of gluten. So you cannot have wheat germ but you can try wheat germ oil. And during the 12 week trial, there were no side effects reported by the participants. So there will be much more to come on wheat germ because as I just mentioned, it targets the pathways you wanted to, it reduces the toxicity it improves liver enzymes, it improves fatty liver, it reduces insulin, it works with vitamin D, vitamin E, I mean. And another important component of fatty liver and liver injury in general is that you will also be making it only about a third of GC protein that you are supposed to be making. And when it comes to GCMAF, GC protein, vitamin D binding protein is extremely important. So that's two strikes against you if you have acute liver failure, failure or any type of liver damage. <clears throat> and this would definitely put you in that category, non-alcoholic fatty liver. So you are making only about a third of the GC protein you should be making. You are continuously assaulting your liver with fructose, which only has one method of elimination and that is similar to alcohol. And that is via the liver. It's even worse than H2S in that regard because H2S can be um, eliminated via the oxygen in your blood and it only ends up in your portal vein and going to your liver when it exceeds capacity. Fructose is different in that regard. So, okay, I hope you'll try it and um, I hope you'll check out all the superfood blog posts. Um, these are clinically shown benefits in humans. And again, drugs cannot reach the mitochondria. Drugs cannot affect the mitochondria positively. And only foods reach the mitochondria. So have a great week, everyone. I hope you'll give this a try, whether it's wheat germ oil, wheat germ itself, I um, got some right away as soon as I read this article and I am adding it to my yogurt just like every other superfood I might end up trying and I will let you know what my particular results are. I will, um, I will start testing my own blood sugar again, which I don't do. Um, but I think I will do that so I can pass along to you sub some substantial um, self-reporting in this particular study. Okay, much more to come. I'll see you next time. Thanks for your time, everyone. Bye.